so uh, you will have five minutes, and then uh, Pavel will have five minutes, and then we start uh, the debate between the two of you. Good. This plot looked the same when Pavel showed it. It just had a different model. So just to clarify things, I, I think we don't disagree in the interpretation of this uh, the, in the two models, but the case that Pavel showed and the case that I showed made different assumptions about what the new particle was. In his case, he was, uh, Gary Angus, in fact, was arguing that it was, do I need this? That it was an, a, a, a new, the new particle was a sterile neutrino with 11, 11 electron volts. In the standard model, it's a WIMP or some other kind of supersymmetric partner or something else. But both cases, in order to fit this, you need a new elementary particle which has not been seen in any universe, which today constitutes 20% of the density of the universe. Now, it's true if it's the sterile neutrino, then because of other properties of neutrinos, it would not fit, actually, it wouldn't even fit galaxy clusters uh, accurately, so you're right there, and it certainly would not fit galaxies. So you would then need additional effects to explain the galaxies, and perhaps this would be a modification of gravity. So there, I think, we agree. In the standard picture, the dark matter would then also explain the clusters and the galaxies. So. There, I think, you do this. I think this, uh, the microwave background, proves that 20% of the present universe is in some new kind of particle. Now, why didn't this affect things from Mond? Well, in Angus's model, it's because at this time, the, the particular version he was using didn't have any effect. It only kicks in uh, in a strong way at later times. And so effectively, the universe as evolution up to this point was not actually affected very significantly by the, by the difference between the uh, theory he was discussing, the extended moon, and the standard theory. And so that's why it looks similar. But of course, then the two theories diverge at later times. So you could ask, though, if I wanted to get rid of this new dark matter, could I find a theory which would explain these bumps without the 11 electron volt neutrino? And there, I just wanted to quote I knew this would come up, so I just pulled out the most recent review I could find of this by one of the proponents. This was in Science, 2009, by Pedro Ferrer and Glenn Starkman. And they looked at all these kinds of theories, and they asked, without putting a new kind of dark matter in, could you explain the microwave background? And they concluded this was not possible. They say, you can see here what I've highlighted in their abstract, they inevitably include dark fields that seed structure growth. What they mean by that is you couldn't get the fluctuations to grow from the, what you see in the microbiome today without having the dark fields, the additional fields, which are part of these theories themselves, having structure which drives the growth. So effectively, these additional fields are acting as dark matter in the sense they have to, they have to allow structure on small scales which have growth. So I think you know, there's something there at this early epoch which is driving the structure. And it might be the electron, 11 electron volt neutrinos. It might be the uh, WIMPs, the, the cold dark matter. It might be one of these new fields, but it still has to be there, not interacting with the photon, driving the things that we see to explain the structure that's seen in the, in the background. So I think that's all I wanted to say. I wanted to clarify that point. I don't, uh, then we can get back to debate. I don't think of, for this five minutes. You didn't even use five minutes. No. In any case, that's uh, easy. OK, thank you. Du hast ja noch das Mikrofon. Okay, it's Pavel's turn now. Yes, so now I completely agree with this. Okay. Um, so there's trouble with debates between scientists, they always end up agreeing. <laughs> <laughs> However, um, lambda CDM is ruled out. <laughs> and the reason is simply because it doesn't work in the local volume and uh, the, uh, the local uh, group. That's the problem. I mean, it might be as beautiful a model as you like. It, it could be, it can be even simpler than introducing new fields, scalar, vector, tensor fields, sure. But um, that simply does not help you if the theory fails fundamentally to explain what we see um, in our galactic uh, neighborhood. And the theory has to be valid. That's a very strict, very strict um, uh, requirement. So you can't say that um, <clears throat> quantum mechanics is ugly because you can't easily solve the equations and you still want to keep Newtonian mechanics on uh, subatomic scales um, simply because Newtonian dynamics is simpler. That is simply not a relevant argument. 
And so, you know, whatever the alternative is to uh, Einsteinian or, or, or the, the strict uh, Einsteinian uh, universe, um, it is going to be more complicated, probably more ugly, much more difficult to compute, but realistic. But we don't know what that reality is. Mond is, an, is a very good description of what we know of on galactic scales. And um, it is not unique. I mean, there is also modified gravity by Moffat. I don't know what you think of, of that. I'm, I'm, I don't really know what much about it, except that it is being published. They make the statements that in MOG, you don't need dark matter in galaxies. You don't need dark matter in, gal in galaxy clusters, nor, um, nor in the whole universe. And they apparently can explain all these issues um, with MOG. So there's an, an entirely different approach which um, people might not like, uh, because it's definitely much more complicated than Newtonian dynamics or the Einsteinian uh, um, universe, but um, it's there and published, and one has to now uh, argue scientifically, um, falsify these uh, possibilities. And there might be other possibilities. Mond and Mock are only two approaches, and there might be other ones. I hear you know, people approach F of R gravity. I don't know much about it, but that's, that's another approach. There are various approaches, and I think the problem is that today we do not know what the fundamental theory is. And I think it's a very equivalent situation with Galileo. When he looked at the sky, he saw a world which nobody had possibly even imagined. You have to go back 500 years and imagine the, 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 the problem of, of visualizing a universe which is so, so huge, so vast, that the stars are so far away that they do not show parallactic motion. This was completely beyond the experience of, of humanity at that time. And I think today we are in a very similar situation where we basically do not understand the physical world, in terms of how matter and space-time actually come to be. Those are unsolved problems. And the fact that our simple description actually fails is exactly that statement. And it is not helpful if we put all resources only in the Lambda CDM pot. I think that I'll stay so finish okay. with that. Thank Thanks. you. Thank you. Do you want to?